Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is well out there and hope you're all enjoying this weather and staying safe. It's very rare that we get sun like this in the UK. Um, so, yeah, so just enjoy it. Let's let's get into it. So, Jed Spence has officially signed for Tottenham in a long-term contract. It was confirmed many, many... Well, it was confirmed weeks ago that we were interested, months ago, in fact, and we finally got this deal over the line. £12 million for Jed Spence. And it works out around £20 million when you add in the bonuses, um, you know, Champions League bonus, England bonus if he gets one, um, if he gets a call up to the first team, um, lots of bonuses. I think there's a an, there's some sort of goal contribution bonus that people, some people have mentioned. It's our sixth signing this season, this, this window, which is I've never seen, I've never seen Tottenham operate like this um ever you know we are still in july it's the 19th of july and we've made six signings some people will be disappointed with this window um others will be ecstatic so far um apologies siri is listening to me um and as you can see on your screen now there it is confirmed by the club we are delighted to announce the signing of jed spence from middlesbrough um and as you can see there, he's holding up the Spurs shirt. He was holding up the Spurs shirt on Sunday as well. Um, but it's taken a few days to get this, um, you know, for them to for them to release it. He put a nice message out saying his goodbyes to Middlesbrough um, today. Um, and he had a very good interview, I thought. He, he looked very composed in the way um, he spoke. And he looks like he wants to kick on. He looks like he wants to be, you know, the number one right wing back at this football club. We've still got Emerson Royale. Still got Matt Doherty. So it's going to be a competition. You know, he comes in off the back of a fantastic season, individual season for, for Nottingham Forest. Uh, they obviously got promoted. And he was a good part of that. And now he joins Tottenham. Um, he's still a young lad. Still got a lot of potential. There's a high seed in there. Um, and we're just going to have to see what happens from here now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about this. Um, others will say, oh, they want a more experienced right back. I believe, you know, it is, uh, personally, I would rather a more experienced right back a bit older, but, you know, at the same time, he is still very young. He's English, so he works out with the homegrown role, and he's got a lot of talent. Now, um, Fabrizio Romano um, said today, and a few other reporters have come out and said that uh, Tottenham, now that we've got Jed Spence over the line, we are still looking for an attacking midfielder, um, but... Um, we're going to be focusing on outgoings this week. The likes of potential Sergio Regulon being linked with a move away um, to Spain. The likes of Javit Tanganga, who we're going to get onto very, very shortly. Um, Dan Kilpatrick said, while Spurs remain in the market for a creative attacker and may target another defender, the focus is currently on outgoings after the arrival of Jed Spence. Basically, literally what I just said. Um, so I can imagine Undon Bele, Giovanni Lo Celso, potentially Emerson Royale, Sergio Regulon. Um, Potentially Joe Rodon as well. Javit Tanganga will all be looking at getting um, consistent first team football. While I've always badgered on that this is a this is a squad game. However, some of the personnel in this football club are simply not good enough. Um, Joe Rodon is he's like 20, 23, 24. and the guy hasn't even made a hundred appearances at club level yet, which is you know something's not right there. Um, you know, I, I was quite a big fan of Joe Roden when he first came in. Uh, made his debut against Chelsea at Stanford Bridge in a nil-nil draw. Uh, apart from one header, dodgy header back to Hugo Lloris, I thought he had a very good game. But he's just not on Dyer's level at the moment. He's not on Romero's level at the moment. He's not on Ben Davis's level at the moment. And then you add in Lengley, and I know this is a squad game, but there's also Sanchez there. I don't see Joe Roden getting much football, and not in a forest have been sniffing around. He might potentially go to them. You look at Javit Tanganga as well. AC Milan are currently sniffing around. Um, and Javit Tanganga's agent is apparently in Italy. Um, as you can see, uh, you should be able to see on your screen right about now. Uh, Fabio Paratici is currently in Italy where he is set for meetings with AC Milan over Javit Tanganga and Sampdoria over Brian Hill. Now, a lot of people will be 
on this on the 50 50 side and when i look at jaffa tanganga i feel like at times he has been mismanaged by this football club you look at the way oliver skip's been managed he got his loan move to norwich he succeeded in that loan move he was one of the star players in that norwich team that got promoted to the premiership jaffa tanganga no one really knows is he a center back or is he a right back He'll come out and say he's a centre-back. But then again, is he going to get any game time? Romero, Lengley, Dyer, Davis, Sanchez. Is Jaffet going to get any game time? I know it's a squad game. and I know I always mention that. But is he going to get... I, I don't see it. Is he going to get any game time at right back? You've got Emerson Royale, Doherty, and now Jed Spence. So probably not. So a lone move would actually benefit Jaffet. Going somewhere like AC Milan, who are going to be challenging for the Scudetto, the league title up against Inter Milan, up against Roma, who have just signed Dybala now, Juventus, um, lots of other players, lots of other players, lots of other teams. In, in Napoli as well will be around there. Uh, Inter and AC will be obviously riding it out. Um, I personally, I wouldn't want to see Jaffet go, but I think a low move would benefit him to get himself more game time, get himself more football. And just for him as well, you know, he can't sit on the bench and just rot away at Tottenham. He needs to actually go out and prove himself, you know, um, and actually show us, you know, what what can you do, if that makes sense, you know. Um, according to uh, Dan Kilpatrick as well, uh, Jed Spence and Clement Lingley will train with their new teammates today um, down at Hotspur Way. Um, so it'll be good to, um, it'll be good to, to see what Lingley can do, because a lot of people are still, you know, he had a lot of mistakes at Barcelona, but, you know, if you watched the Spurs corner on Sunday, you would have seen, um, you would have seen the stats on Lingley compared to, you know, Bastoni, Guavidal, uh, Torres, etc. Um, quote on Ryan Sessignon, Ryan Sessignon, Ivan Perisic, I can learn a lot from him technically, mentally and physically. He's already helped me with little pointers, tips about the way um, affect the game more in an attacking sense and score more goals. And this is why I like the signing of Van Perisic because not only is he Van Perisic a top, top, top left wing back, you know, who Conte moulded him into that left wing back role. Um, he is going to help the likes of Sergio Reguilon if he does stay, and he is going to help the likes of Ryan Sessignon just to kind of be that, you know, that mentor when Perisic doesn't always get the game time. Um, Rotation is going to be key. So that's that's going to do the likes of Ryan Session on absolute wonders. Um, it really is, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, that's Conte's guy now. Um, Fabrizio Romano um, put out last night um, that uh, Fabio Paratici will be in direct talks of many clubs this week for the outgoings. Like I said, Joe Rodon, Undon Bele, um Giovanni Lo Celso, potentially Ryan, uh, potentially um, Sergio Regulon and Emerson Royale. Um, so according to lots of sources, AC Milan do want Jaffet Tanganga. That is what they're after. Whether it be a loan move or opponent, I can see this being a loan move personally. And like I just said, it will benefit both, both parties if he goes out and gets more experience. Let me know down below who's going to be the next signing. Who's going to be our seventh signing? We want this creative midfielder. Is it going to be Paqueta? Is it going to be James Madison? Is it going to be another forward? Let me know down below what you think. Make sure you are smashing likes up on this video, guys. We're only 85 subscribers away from the big 7,000. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button and show your support on the channel. Um, let's talk about Brian Hill. Let's talk about him. Few teams in Italy, few teams in Spain that are interested. What do you think of it? Would you keep Brian Hill? You know, you look at our forwards next season, you've got Harry Kane obviously through the middle, Richarlison, Kudasevsky, Son, Lucas Mora. Is Brian Hill going to get any game time? He might. Um, Conte took him on the preseason tour to, to uh, he wanted to be impressed. We don't know what, what the outcome of, of his preseason tour is yet. Um, <laughs> I feel like at times Brian Hill can be an excellent dribble of the ball and he can really push the team up the pitch, but I just don't see him cementing his place in this team 
just yet. I think he needs to go out and get more experience. I would like to see Brian Hill get loaned to another Premier League club, maybe an Everton, maybe a Crystal Palace, maybe a Southampton, maybe a Fulham, maybe a Forest, someone like that where, you know, you're not going to win every single game. You're not going to, you know, be the dominant team every game, but just at least get some experience in the Premier League because he's barely played. He's, he's barely played for Tottenham in the Premier League. He's probably he's probably not even had 10 appearances. Let's actually have a look at um, how many appearances Brian Hill has, has made in, um, in the league so far. Brian Hill, here we go. Um... For some reason, it's not coming up. Brian Hill must not exist then. <laughs> All right. Well, according to uh, there we go. He's, he's twenty one years old. Um, according to Transport Market at UK, they value him at sixteen million pounds. Um, when we go to stats, and then we go stats by club. Um, he's he's honestly barely played any football. You know, twenty nine games. 23 games at Sevilla Atletico, 21 games at Sevilla, um, 20 games at Tottenham, one assist, 20 games. I'll share the stats on the screen just so you guys can actually get an idea of he, this guy has barely played. Um, Valencia, 17 games, 123 games, 11 goals. Look at the minutes, only 756 minutes. In 20 games for Spurs. Only 450 minutes in 21 games for Sevilla. So he's literally barely played. He's got a few appearances in the locker, but he's barely played any minutes. Let me know what would you do with Brian Hill down below. And last but not least, we're going to talk very, very briefly about Nabil Fakir. Um, obviously, over at Real Betis. I would like to see potentially a Giovanni Le Celso and cash deal for Nabil Fakir. I think he's a, he's a good player. If, um, if you look at yesterday's video, you'll be able to see my analysis on him. We could potentially bring him in um, potentially, there's a few sources out there. They're not the most credible sources, but they are out there. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you are smashing the like up. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel. Um, these daily videos are going to keep coming as you guys are really, really enjoying it. So show some love on the video. Um, I'll be streaming tomorrow with Sava, Sava and Wright tonight. We're back tomorrow night. So we'll see you all then. Um, like I said, like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you very, very soon. Make sure you comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Um, and yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Much